Hello, in this video I'm going to show how I made this. This was done in only one day using only free software. I'm going to show you all the stages of the process from start to finish. Firstly, using the Blossom add-on for Blender, you can create an entire city with only a few clicks. Let me show you. After downloading and installing the add-on, link is in the description. Go over to the side panel where it says Blossom. Uncheck all the boxes except for buildings. Click on Select. It will open a tab in your browser. Then, using the map, you can select an area of the world using the square. For me, I decided to use a part of New York City as it features a lot of tall buildings, which I believed would work nicely in my futuristic sci-fi scene. After choosing an area using the box, copy the coordinates, go back into Blender, select the Paste button, and then select Import. Now you have imported all the buildings within the selected area. In the View tab, change the Clip Start to 1 and the End to 10,000. Now's the time to get rid of any parts that you don't like. You may or may not get a whole bunch of materials attached to the imported buildings. Don't worry, this can be fixed. Select the wall material, highlight every face, then assign the material. Select one of the roof faces, press Shift and G. Choose Normal. This should highlight all the roof areas, assign the roof material to these faces. If you have a lot of extra materials like I did, click the down arrow, and select Remove Unused Slots. Now, it's time to make the wall material for the buildings. Grab a building texture from the many free texture sites on the web and plug it into the base color. If you have a roughness map, plug it into the roughness. If you don't see the material appearing on the model properly, go into the Vertex tab, open UV Maps, and delete the one named Size. Now in UV Editing, unwrap and choose Cube Projection. Scale accordingly. Next, I set up the camera placement Make sure the camera is set to 1 for the clip start, and 10,000 for the end. If some of your buildings are not visible, then set the end to 20,000, or even higher. I added a daytime HDI to my scene for better lighting. For the background, I added a ground plane, and extruded some of the sides upwards. I duplicated the building model a couple times, scaled, and rotated them, and placed them at the back of my scene to create more density in the city. Make sure to apply the scale of the duplicated models, and rescale the UVs. I wanted a focal point for my sci-fi city scene. I wanted something that would instantly capture the attention of the viewer. For this, I thought of an extraordinarily huge sphere hovering over the city, maybe a spaceship from another planet. I started out with a sphere, I duplicated the sphere, and added a wireframe modifier, then scaled it up a little bit. I wanted to make a large entryway, so with a smaller sphere and a boolean modifier, I had an entrance for my ship. I added some detail to the entrance by insetting a row of faces, extruding them, and utilizing the Discombobulator add-on in Blender to create a futuristic beveled box look. I wanted a bright light shining out of the entrance, so I selected some faces at the top and assigning an emission material to them. The wireframe was looking too insignificant for my liking, so I added more thickness in the modifier. After using the Boolean modifier to create the entrance, the topology was looking very unacceptable. I cleaned it up by merging verts and using the knife tool. For the sphere textures, I used a site called Displacement X, which is a procedural sci-fi map generator. I added the textures that I got from the Displacement X site to my sphere material and added a basic metallic material to the wireframe sphere. I turned the strength up on my normal map and for the sphere's UVs, I gave it a sphere projection. I then scaled the textures using a texture coordinate and mapping node. The textures at the entrance were looking stretched, so I highlighted the faces using the lasso selection and unwrapped them with a sphere projection. I wanted to get rid of the wireframe at the entrance. For this, I applied the wireframe modifier, added a boolean modifier, chose intersect, scaled down so it's slightly within the sphere, applied the boolean modifier, and scaled it back up again. I wasn't satisfied with the sphere material, so I downloaded a free metal texture set. Plugged the color, metallic, normal and roughness maps into a principled BSDF, and plugged that into a mix shader. Then for the factor, I got the sphere's displacement map, connected it to a color ramp, and played around with the values. For the next part, make sure the cursor is exactly in the middle of the sphere. If it isn't, click on the sphere and set origin to center of mass, then snap cursor to selected. Next I added a sphere, scaled it to roughly the same size, rotated it, 
selected a circular area of faces, inverted the selection and deleted the faces. Then I gave it a shade smooth. I moved it away slightly and gave it a new material with a new set of maps that I got from Displacement X. I gave the UVs a sphere projection. Now for the magic, I plugged the displacement map into a color ramp and plugged that into the alpha. And after playing around with the values of the color ramp, I got a result that looked like this. I duplicated it around the sphere a few times, scaling and rotating to get some variation. After a bit of contemplation, I decided to ditch a daytime scene and also get rid of the building material that I applied earlier. For the new material, I would use a nighttime cityscape image for the base color. In UV editing, I selected project from view, and then moved the UV islands around so that they all fit within the buildings in the image. It's a tedious process, but after a bit of time, I got a result I was satisfied with. To add some light to the material, I plugged the base color into a color ramp and plugged that into an add, and then plugged that into the emission strength. Now we have some light emitting from the windows. I changed to a nighttime HDRI to fit the scene. I wanted to add some red lights emitting from the skyscrapers. For this, I got a cube and gave it a red emission material. I beveled the corners to add some roundness. Now using a particle system, I set it to hair, changed the render as to object, and chose the red emitter as the instanced object, and set the emit from to vertices. You can change the seed and the size if you're not happy with the result. I wanted to add some more atmosphere by adding some sort of fog, so I added a cube and scaled it up so it covered my entire scene. I set the display to wire in viewport display so that I can see what is happening within the cube. For the material I added a principled volume and set the density to 0.0001. I wanted more depth to the city, so I added more buildings to the background by duplicating the building model and scaling accordingly. For even more depth and atmosphere, I added a plane set it in front of the back buildings and the sphere. And for the material, I added an emission shader and plugged it into the shader's volume. I changed the color of the emission to a light blue with a strength of 0. 0.00002. I still wasn't happy with the depth and the atmosphere, so I duplicated the building model again and added another plane using a copy of the first one. Something I recently added to my workflow as one of the final stages is I like to use the Upscaler AI tool within the website FreePick. The Upscaler gives me a reimagining of my scene, sometimes adding elements to my scene that I didn't think of. With this new AI-enhanced image, I like to use it as a reference while I work on my render in Photoshop, taking ideas from the enhanced image and editing them into my own render. I won't go into too much detail, as I don't want this to be a Photoshop tutorial, but here are some of the changes I made to my scene. I added a beam of light coming out of the sphere. I added a bit more detail to the buildings. I added light coming from behind some of the buildings for more depth. I added some vignetting to the top of the sphere, and to finish off, I added a color lookup. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Catch you on the next one.